Hello, my name's Carlos Poon and I'm a 3D VFX tutor here at Escape Studios. Today, we're going to be talking about why match moving is so important in visual effects. Now, match moving allows us to take a 2D image sequence like this and place 3D objects into it so that they appear as if they're really there. So, for example, if we unhide our toad ornament, you can see that as the camera moves, or as, as we move forward in time, the toad seems to stick in place on top of the table. Now, how does it do this? Well, it recreates the original camera. So if we just select our camera and its motion path. And at every frame, we have tracked various 2D points, which now become 3D. Let's unhide our 2D to 3D points. And we can see we have a bunch of points tracked within our image, represented by locators. Now, if we want to place objects onto this table, we need to track points in this image that represent the table. So here we have one point, two points, three points, and four points. And we've created a piece of geometry here. that lines up with those four points. And once we do this, we can create 3D geometry and place them within our scene. Okay, and we can move these around and snap them to the floor or any locations within the scene that we like. So for example, Let's zoom in here. Let's move these two to a different position. Move this one down to the floor. And just rotate this one around. Now, how did we get to this stage? Let's go back to Equalize and start tracking a few points to explain the process of match moving inside of Equalizer. Let's start with a quick tour around the Equalizer interface. So here we have our main window. And over here we have our object browser, which contains our camera and our point groups. At the moment we have 22 points tracked in 2D. And we also have our lens here. So let's have a look at our points, our 3D points. These are the points that we have tracked. And these are their tracking paths, the long lines. Okay, and if we look at our lens, our lens is currently set to 20 millimeter fixed. And if we happen to do our first tracking point, we'll do a calculation after that and see where, what we can come up with. Okay, so let's start by creating a tracking point here, an additional tracking point. We pick the center of this point, and this is known as our marking pattern area, our pattern area, and this is our search area. We center 2D, we can press track, it goes all the way through to the last frame, and we can end it. We can go back and check our point. It's fixed in the center of the frame, and if it's accurate enough, we should be able to do a 3D solve. So let's calculate all from scratch. We can see here in our window, we have a frame by frame position for our camera, and then we have our 3D points in space. And this doesn't look like our Maya camera, so maybe there's something wrong. So. Let's see if it happens to be our lens, because as we know, we calculate points in 3D space, but we also calculate the camera position, camera orientation, 
and the camera lens. So let's select our lens and look at it in the attribute editor. It's 20 mil. That's set to fix. Let's set this to adjust. And let's do a wide parameter adjustment between 5 mil and 100 mil focal length. Put up our samples a little bit. Okay, and let's do an adjustment. Okay, so it seems to think that our best lens is 43.78. So let's go with that for the moment and do a calc calculation. So now we have a much better camera. The path is much more smoother and it doesn't seem to be erratic. Our points seem to be quite spread, well spread out. So let's use this result. We're going to look at this in 3D. Okay, we can see our camera path has been recreated. Okay, we go back to our manual tracking controls and we can switch on our 3D points and we can see in the foreground we've got larger crosses and in the background we've got smaller crosses. Let's have a look at this in another window. Let's have a look at our timeline editor and this gives us an overview of all the points that we've tracked. So we have a variety of points tracked here. And we have a spread all the way through from the first frame to the last frame. And a good set of points in the background, as well as a good set of points in the foreground. Okay, so let's continue this in the next session. Thank you.